I'd like to talk to you now about a little utility that you can get from Grass Valley which allows you to convert footage from one format to another. Originally it was invented just to convert ABC HD into Canopus's own format, HQ, so it's actually called AVC HD to HQ. But it does a lot more these days. Now you can get the latest version by visiting the support side of the Grass Valley website and it's under General Utilities. Just click here and download the latest version. Then once you've installed it, you'll have two icons on the desktop. The top one here lets you configure it. The bottom one here is a fancy way of previewing footage. Uh, to be honest, these days Windows 7 can preview ABC HD very happily, so I never really use the preview program anymore. I just use the conversion part of it. Now to actually convert some footage, you don't even use this. What you do is you go off, you find the footage that you want to convert, right click on it and say convert with AVC HD to HQ. You can see there's another one that says preview it, which is that other program that I just deleted off the desktop. But to actually convert something, I would click on that. In fact, what I'd probably do is I would just select a whole bunch of files and then I'd say convert and it would go off and do all of them at once. So you can see it's having a look at all those files and saying, oh, I'm doing about seven or eight files there. Let's do them all at once. And off it goes and it starts encoding all of them. It's doing six at a time. I'm using a Sandy Bridge processor here, which has got eight cores in it. It's a, it's a quad-core processor with a thing called hyperthreading, which means it's got eight cores. And you can see it's doing six files at once and using 100% processing power. So it's going to be as fast as it possibly can. Of course, the big question is, what's it making it into? And that's what you use this little program for to actually decide how it's going to make it. So let's have a look at configuring the program. So double click on this icon and it opens it up. The top section up here just says, where's it going to go? This bit says, what are you gonna make it into? And then you have a few other different settings down here. Some of the new stuff that's recently been added is to do with making 3D footage and also scaling and this is possibly the thing that's going to be of most interest to people, better quality downscaling. In other words, take high definition and make standard definition and it'll look better than it does with EDIUS at the moment. If I just wanted to use this to convert footage, imagine I'm using 1920-1080 footage. Well, the obvious thing to make it easier to use is I will convert it to Canopus HQ and I'll just click on HQ set and say, yeah, don't change the size. I could use HQ or I could use their new 10-bit HQX. I tend to use HQ if I'm converting ABC HD since ABC HD is only 8-bit anyway, so what's the point in converting it to 10-bit? And I can choose to change my audio just to have two channels or if it happens to have surround sound, I could keep the surround sound. And that's it. That's now configured so that when I right-click on these and convert, it's going to convert them into HQ footage of the same number of pixels. In other words, it's not resizing it. This program's done that for ages. The new stuff is down here. It's the resizing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, I am going to take a high definition piece of video and I'm going to convert it to standard definition and I'm going to use this here scaling to do a better job than EDIUS would do on its own. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it into a Canopus AVI file, an HQ AVI file, and I'm going to click on HQ set and say, right, I'm going to convert it into this. There are kind of three sizes of standard definition here. All are valid ones, but I'm going to use the bottom one. And actually, really, my footage is 720 by 576 because I'm in PAL band. I'm not 720 by 486. So what I'm saying is, right, convert whatever I choose to convert. Now convert it to this, which is standard definition. I'm going to leave the fields at automatic. Just click on the setting here and say, yep, make sure it's on fine so I get the best out of it. Make sure it's down converted to stereo. OK. Now what happens is if I select any of these files and say convert, it's going to take that file and it's going to resize it to a standard definition piece of video. What's the quality going to look like? That's decided by this resizing mode here. And you notice it says Lanxos 3. 
If I click on mode set, you can see I've got quite a lot of different options. ADS 6 out of the box doesn't do what's called Lanxos scaling. Lanxos scaling is generally recognized to give you the best quality scaling of footage. So when you go from high def to standard def, you get the best job out of it. ADS 6 doesn't do that. ADS 6.5 when it comes out will, but ADS 6 doesn't. ADS 6 does one of the top ones up here. And it's okay, but it's not as good as Lanxos. You can see I've actually got various settings here, and you can try them all out and see what they look like. I actually tend to like the bottom one. Obviously, to choose a different one, just tick on it. OK, it's now using a different form of scaling. I tend to think the bottom one does the best job. Having told it to produce standard definition, all I've got to do, select the file that I want, say convert, and it converts it. Where's it gone? Well, at the moment, it's going onto the F drive into a folder called New Folder, because I clicked on Select and told it to. There is my downscale clip at 725.76. But you might say, I don't want to scale my source clips, I actually want to scale my final edit. You can do that. You can actually do that very, very easily. Because although this is called AVCHD converter, so you might think that you'd actually have to start with an AVCHD file, it doesn't just work on AVCHD files, it works on AVI files. So let's go into EDIUS, and here I am in EDIUS. This is a couple of uh, clips which are 1920 by 1080 original footage. I'm editing them away on the timeline. I'd now like to make that into a piece of standard definition video, but I want to use the AVCHD converter to try and get the best results. Actually, dead simple. Get your sequence, file, export, print to file, and choose Canopus HQ. So, in other words, I'm not producing an AVCHD file, I'm producing an AVI file. I go to Canopus HQ. I always choose the fine one, click on export, give it a name, save. And off it goes and exports it into an HQ file. I like HQ because it exports really, really quickly. Now I want to convert that to standard definition. So I'm going to go to the file on the hard drive there, right click on it and say convert with AVCHD to HQ. And just like it did with AVCHD, it starts converting it. Right, job done. Now in my new folder, I've got a new clip, a standard definition version of that. Let's stick that back into EDIUS, and then I'm going to put that onto the timeline, and let's try and compare the quality of the job that the AVCHD converter has done to what EDIUS does. Now I'm not going to see anything right now because I'm in a high def project. Let's change to a standard def project. Just a quick toggle between the two. Now it's vaguely possible you won't see a much difference on the internet where you're actually watching this, but there is a definite difference between the two of these. If I just stick a layouter on the one that has been created with the AVCHD converter, this side is the AVCHD converter, this side is EDIUS doing the job itself. I'm going to start the thing loop playing, and you can see there's a definite difference between this side and this side. This side's a little bit sharper. Now that you might say, hang on, there's some peculiar stuff going on here with the, the diagonal lines and so on. It doesn't look quite right. That's because I'm not actually showing you very well because I am filming this at 720 progressive on a computer screen to see the difference because this is standard definition interlaced. I'd really need to pop this up onto a TV. But you can see, for a start, there's a bit more definition in these stones to this one. Now the only way you'll know for sure how well it does it is to try it yourself. Grab hold of the AVCHD converter, it's free if you've got EDIUS, try it out, look at the results, see if you think it does a better job. This kind of scaling is going to be built into EDIUS 6.5 when it comes out, so you'll be able to do it straight away inside of EDIUS. But right now, without spending any extra DOS, you can grab hold of this utility and do the better scaling right now, and it's really quick. There's a couple of other things worth mentioning in this program. Up here, I've been telling it to save things onto the F drive in a folder called New Folder. Actually, I like to have this one ticked because, as it says, if EDIUS is actually running, what it'll do is put the file in the EDIUS project folder and it'll automatically put it in the bin for you, which is nice. Other things it does, well, I've been making HQ files because they are a very nice way of keeping the quality up. Actually, I could click on this one and imagining I'm downscaling from high def to standard def and making a DVD, well that will make me the right kind of stuff for a DVD. Click on MPEG2 program stream, MPEG set, set up your downscaling, and then down here you can decide on what the data rate is going to be. 
Now you can see this data rate, you might be looking at that saying, what the devil's this all talking about? This is just saying, okay, well let's make the HQ data rate twice the H264 or two and a half or three times or whatever. Frankly, what I tend to do is I'll click on custom, setting, and then when I'm looking at this lot, okay, I'm doing 720 by 576. I'm gonna make it for a DVD, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna choose a setting of maybe 6,000, 5,000, you know, some setting to make sure it fits onto a DVD. So you could come in here and get it to make an MPEG program stream straight away. Don't even make an AVI file. To be honest, if you're gonna go back into EDIUS, stick it on the timeline and then make your DVDs with EDIUS, it's not worth it because EDIUS will re-encode it anyway and work out the bit rates for you. But if you're making up the MPEG file to go into another program, then you might choose to use this. Other stuff that we've got down here on the aspect ratio side, you know, you're gonna choose a clip. How does it know what the aspect ratio is? Well, with any luck, it knows what it is, but if not, you can tell it. You can say, no, look, it's 16 by nine or it's four by three. You notice when I clicked up the HQ settings here and I chose the size, I carefully didn't actually mention what these two meant. That means letterbox it. So if I'm going from high definition to standard definition, high definition is always 16 by nine, standard def can be 16 by nine, it can be four by three. So here I could say, well, letterbox it, and it'll make me a four by three one letterbox. Or this one, will be edge cut. So in other words, make me a four by three one and chop the edges off. Again, don't tend to use those, I just tend to leave it and make it exactly the same size as the original. The 3D stuff is actually very interesting if you're editing 3D. Obviously, absolutely no use if you're not editing 3D. There are some specific cameras, and I have a Sony camera which films my 3D footage, my left and right eye footage into one file which is an AVCHD file in what's called MVC format. And EDIUS 3D understands that no problem whatsoever, but some other programs don't. What can this do? Well, this can take a 3D AVCHD file and it can split it out. So instead of having it all combined into a left and right in one thing, I can convert it to side by side here. I could do just the left or just the right, or I can convert it into a left and a right eye file. So it takes the one file, which has got both eyes in it, saves it as two files, which frankly makes it really, really useful because I can now use my Sony footage in a different program that doesn't understand it. EDIUS does understand it. Not a problem with EDIUS. Other programs, Avid in particular, I can now make something that Avid might take. There are a few options like, for example, if you have a fire coder blue, it will use it. I don't. And conversion without schedule, basically, that actually doesn't make much sense in English. What it's really saying is that at the moment, with that not ticked, it's going to use all your processing power. With this ticked, it's going to use some of the processing power. So you could actually get it to convert it in the background whilst you carry on doing other stuff. But if you leave it unticked, which is what I always do, it'll do it as quick as possible, but you're not going to be able to do anything else at the same time because, frankly, the machine is chundering away at really, really high speed. Anyway, I think it's a great utility. I don't use this anymore to convert my AVCHD because the latest versions of EDIUS just deal with AVCHD as it comes off the camera. No problem whatsoever. The only time I'd ever use this for AVCHD these days is if I didn't have a very good computer. But, frankly, just go out and buy one. The reason I would use this now is for the downscaling. Bunged in there for nothing as long as you've got EDIUS.